what is this one big misinterpretation of the 144,000 Jews in the book of Revelation? So you have two passages in the book of Revelation, Revelation 7, Revelation 14, and uh, that talk about the, the 144,000 Jews. And I want to I want to re, uh, respond to a misinterpretation of of how the 144,000 Jews are interpreted in Revelation 7. So uh, the misinterpretation is that these 144,000 are evangelists. Now you might have heard that. I'm sure you, many of you have heard that. It's it's repeated so much that uh, that you know people start believing it. Uh, you, you and and there, there's no exegetical evidence for it. It's just something that is just assumed. It is assumed. Uh, which characterizes all pre-tribulationism as far as I'm concerned. It's just one big assumption. And it's repeated over and over and over and over again, over and over, every generation. And people start to, to believe it. And it's the same thing with, you know, this is just a part and parcel of the whole the pre-trib theological system. It's repeated over and over and over again. 144,000 Jews are evangelists. And as if it's never been challenged. And I've challenged it in my book. I've never had any pre-trib exponent actually actually respond to my argumentation. Uh, but yeah, the 144,000 Jews are not evangelists. It doesn't say they are. They say they're servants of God, but it doesn't say they're evangelists. Uh, and so let me just back up and give you some context of how this interpretation, uh, why pre-tribs are required to take this view. Because... They have to explain, they recognize that in key parts in the book of Revelation, in the context of the Antichrist Great Tribulation, it references believers and saints. And so, of course, they can't have that be the church, right? They can't have that be the church. Otherwise, uh, their pre-trib system is undermined. Uh, they have the church going through the Great Tribulation. They, you know, can't have that. Uh, so... So they uh, they recognize all these references, but so they have to they have to uh, <clears throat> explain well a way uh, who these saints are these references. If they're not the church, they have to be someone else. So they say they are, you know, they're quote unquote tribulation saints, right? These are the saints who were saved after the rapture, after the secret rapture, and so uh, and the hundred forty four thousand. Uh, Jews, they became, they become evangelists, and they they're evangel evangelizing the whole world. And you have this huge, large revival, this worldwide revival, while the the church is in heaven. Uh, so that's that's the that's kind of the uh, the backstory of this interpretation. So <clears throat> the question is again, is the, is this correct? And it's not. It's again, it's a assumption. And so I want to go through this passage, uh, you know, just briefly. Again, you can, I, I wrote about this in my book, Antichrist Before the Day of the Lord, what every Christian needs to know about the uh, return of Christ. And so let's, let's go through uh, this passage. It's in Revelation uh, 7. All right, let me, let me just stop there. Actually, I should, I, I should give you some context. Obviously, I, I, I'm a big on context. So uh, where do we get to this point, right, in the narrative of Revelation 7, 1, with 144,000 Jews? How do we get to this point? So in the book of Revelation, we have a scroll, and there's seven seals on the scroll. These are conditions uh, f to be met before the scroll is af actually opened up. And then you have the, um, once the scroll is opened up, you have the day of the Lord's wrath, the, the trumpet judgments, and the bow judgments. And so what we have, for example, in, in the, uh, the first few seals, and I've talked about this before, again, in my book, uh, they, they correspond to the beginning of birth pains. And I believe that they will unfold during the, the unrevealed state of the Antichrist uh, during the first half of the seven-year period. This is the time when the unrevealed Antichrist is politically positioning himself. Okay? And then you have the midpoint uh, where... You have the abomination, desolation, the Antichrist is actually revealed. 
And so that's when the Great Tribulation begins, and the Great Tribulation, Antichrist Great Tribulation, will be cut short with the rapture, the resurrection, and then you have the Day of the Lord's Wrath. And I believe that the, the if you look at the fifth seal, in Revelation 6, you have the fifth seal, you have, uh, there's uh, a heavenly response to these martyrs. And they're telling the martyrs, they're promising, listen, God's wrath is coming soon, all right? Uh, it's not happening yet. It is uh, because the um, the uh, the result of their martyrdom is due not to God. It's it's due to um, uh, I believe it's due to the Antichrist. And I believe that the four, uh, the um, I'm sorry the uh, the fifth or actually the fourth the and fifth seal actually occurs and the sixth seal fourth fifth and sixth seal occur during the the Great Tribulation. And so you have the fifth seal that promises God's wrath. The sixth seal, the sixth seal is a celestial disturbance, and it's signaling God's wrath. I say it uh, portends the wrath of God. That corresponds with Joel 2.30, Matthew 24, that point to uh, God's impending wrath. The wrath of God is not happening already, as pre-tribulationists claim. Uh, so, and then you have, uh, before the seventh seal is opened, all right, and you can look at Revelation 8, and there's a, a, a solemn moment uh, when just before the wrath of God is poured out. But before the seventh seal is opened and the scroll is opened, uh, there's two groups of people being delivered. There's 144,000 Jews who are being delivered, protected, and then there's this innumerable multitude, uh, you know, from every tribe, nation, tongue who appear in heaven, they have resurrected bodies. And it actually explicitly says they have come out of the Great Tribulation, which, which of course, corresponds with Jesus' teaching. So the, the sequential parallels there are, uh, you know, uh, very convincing and uh, is very telling because it shows that God's word is consistent. But this 144,000 Jews, um, uh, that's, the, these 144,000 Jews, they are, they are being protected, okay? And this is, this is what I wrote. Uh, this is what I wrote in, in the book. Revelation 7, 2. It says, Then I saw an, another, an angel ascending from the east who had the seal of the living God. He shouted out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given permission to damage the earth and the sea. Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. Now I heard the number of those who were marked with the seal, 144,000 sealed from all tribes of the people of Israel. So this is what I wrote. This is on uh, page uh, 96. I'm sorry, 90, 95 to 96, again, in my book, Antichrist Before uh, the Day of the Lord. All right, the first verse signals God's looming wrath. Notice the wrath has not already come. All right. Uh, it says, four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so no wind could blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Because the wrath of God has not begun already. Um, they're preparing for the wrath of God. Uh, it's amazing how pre-tribs not just miss this, but they ignore it. Conveniently ignore uh, this passage. Uh, the wording is strikingly similar to that of Jesus in his Olive Discourse. His angels will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, Matthew 24, verse 31. Before his wrath begins, God will sovereignly protect a group of 144,000 Jews by having them marked with a seal. Okay? Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. And I mentioned this indicates that the day of the Lord's wrath has not yet begun. The sealing functions uh, as protection from God's wrath. Uh, and this is, this is a big mis uh, another m a misconception, misinterpretation of the, the 144,000 Jews. Not only are they not evangelists, but I don't believe that they're believers at this time. Uh, it's the, the seal, the Holy Spirit. People would say, well, this is the spirit of the, uh, the seal of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't believe it is. Actually, it says that angels, angels uh, actually place the seal on them. Okay. Yeah, it's called the, uh, the seal of the Father, but it's, it's, it's the, uh, the angels uh, place the seal on them. 
Uh, furthermore, it's the context. This is always ignored, the context. The context indicates the function. The function here is to protect these 144,000 Jews from the wrath of God that's going to come about them. Uh, the, the innumerable multitude uh, is in heaven. Okay, They're believers. They're in heaven. They've been raptured. The 144,000 Jews are not believers. They have not been raptured. They will be physically protected on earth during the, the day of the Lord's wrath. And this is, I believe, this is, gonna, uh, this is part and parcel of the remnant of, 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 of a faithful Israel who will come to recognize their Messiah and, uh, and receive, accept their Messiah, Jesus, at the end of the seven-year period. But this is not the end of the seven-year period yet. They are unbelievers. And even the Old Testament talks about that there's going to be this remnant that's protected in the wilderness. Uh, so, and I, I think that this uh, 144,000 Jews very likely may be that group. Nevertheless, again, these, they're, they're not believers. They are protected uh, by a seal uh, that the angels put on them. Okay, and it is. It's, it's functioning as a seal of physical protection. Eventually, of course, at the end of the seven-year period, they will uh, be sealed ultimately with the Holy Spirit who will then uh, give them new life, give them new light, and they will recognize their Messiah and they will weep over their Messiah uh, because uh, that weeping will show that they have previously have not recognized that Jesus is the true Messiah, but they will. Okay, and then I, uh, I wrote... <clears throat> Uh, many interpreters identify the 144,000 as the church. The passage, however, explicitly identifies these 144,000 as Jews from specific tribes. Okay, this is typically historicists or idealists. Uh, a lot of all millennialists interpret the 144,000 Jews as the church. Uh, and I didn't go, really go into it too much because, uh, in my book because I wasn't addressing all millennial um, theology, but I, I said it's mistaken to find some mysterious symbolism in this group and con conclude that it is not speaking of literal Jews. Uh, it departs from the natural reading of the text. Therefore, without uh, a deeper symbolic meaning for this passage, I interpret this in a face value fashion. Okay, so just to finish up here, I, I, I want to note here now the uh, my main point, and that's the final observation is the nature of these 144,000 Jews. Not only are they from the tribes of Israel, but they are also called, quote, servants of our God. The term for servant is thulos, which is the spiritual context, which in the spiritual context means to be a slave of God, solely committed and controlled by him to serve his purposes. And don't get me wrong, the, the ceiling also has, you know, it's not just the functioning or the protection, physical protection is the end in itself. Obviously, the, it's a means to protect them so that they will be that first fruits, right? Um, and, and be the, um, uh, that promised remnant of, of, of Israel that was prophesied in the Old Testament. Uh, and by the way, in, in, in the New Testament as well, especially in uh, Romans chapter 11, when uh, Paul says that all Israel will be saved. Okay, pre-tribulationism has assumed the 144,000 to be the Jewish evangelists who will cause a, some world revival. Uh, but their presupposition is problematic because there's no hint that the 144,000 Jews are evangelists. Okay. It is a faulty assumption based on their pre-tribulational system. Further, there is no evidence of a, of a revival during the Great Tribulation or during the day of the Lord's wrath. Uh, to be sure, there will be a revival during the Great Tribulation in the sense of renewal for those who are already believers. Uh, that is the remnant. So, uh, that, uh, so there you go. I mean, again, you can we'll search in vain in Revelation seven uh, that. Uh, to, to try to connect the 144,000 Jews as evangelists. And again, at the beginning of this video, I explained, I explained that this interpretation comes from a theolo theological construct, a pre-trib theological construct that has to explain away 
uh, all of these references to saints and and uh, you know all all of these uh, uh, believers, okay, and they can't just be saved, you know, poof from themselves. They of course they they preterms recognize it. There has to be a witness. There has to be a witness to uh, to this to all these uh, uh, believing Gentiles, and so they make the hundred forty four thousand. Uh, Jews into evangelists uh, who will go all around the whole world and try to evangelize. But again, that's one big assumption. It is not supported by Scripture. It is uh, is found in the mind of the pre-tribulational uh, interpreter, but is not found in uh, our Holy Scripture where that is our authority and not our uh, theological traditions.